Today we'll be completing our discussion of the 18th chapter, the last chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, half of which we discussed yesterday. So yesterday we were discussing about performing prescribed duties. So by doing duty, how does it uh, lead to uh, self-realization? So Lord Krishna explains, uh, worship of the Lord by doing one's duty. That is the way of actually self-realization. Now, in the human society, according to the qualities of work, there are different divisions, four divisions. You might be already familiar with these divisions. The four divisions according to work are Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. Intellectuals, the warrior class, martial class, or uh, the mercantile class, and finally the labor class. So the qualities of work, according to their qualities of work, uh, the divisions are made. The first division of brahmanas or intellectuals is they work by nine natural qualities. Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, knowledge, wisdom and religiousness. These are the nine qualities by which they work. Then the second class, the Kshatriyas or the uh, warrior class of people, they work by seven qualities naturally which is to be found in them heroism, power, determination, resourcefulness, courage in battle, generosity and leadership. These are the qualities by which they work. Then the third class of Vaishyas or the mercantile class, they have three natural qualities by which they work. Uh, farming, cow protection and business. And for the last class, the labor class, Shudras, there is labor or service to others. Now, Krishna explains how by following the qualities of work, every man can become perfect. This is very important to understand. It is not that only some high class people only are eligible for spiritual life or eligible for liberation or eligible for elevation, spiritual elevation. No. Krishna here says everyone, every human being, is eligible for liberation, is eligible for spiritual elevation, is eligible to achieve perfection in this life. So he explains how. How is it possible? By worship of Krishna, who is the source of all beings and who is all-pervading, one can attain perfection through performing one's own duties. Yesterday so much stress was given to doing one's own duty, prescribed duty. Now, along with doing one's duty, one has to actually worship Krishna. Now, why Krishna? That is because Krishna is the source of all beings. This was explained in an earlier chapter. In the 10th chapter, the essential four verses which summarize the teachings of the Gita. There Krishna had told he is the source of everyone and everything in the entire creation. So Krishna is the ultimate source of everyone. And therefore Krishna should be worshipped by everyone. 
and Krishna is also all pervading. All pervading means he is present everywhere. He is present everywhere as Paramatma in this world. He has entered into everything. So, uh, that Krishna is to be worshipped through performing one's own duty. Then Krishna says, duty is prescribed according to one's own nature are free from sinful reactions. One should better engage in one's own occupation even imperfectly than try to do somebody else's duty trying to do it perfectly. Why? Why Krishna is saying like this is because it is said here every endeavor is covered by some fault. So one should not give up one's work which is suitable for one's own nature even if it is faulty. Then Krishna describes the actual steps for self-realization by exercising self-control and being unattached and disregarding all material enjoyments. Three specific things Krishna is telling. Self-control, not attached and disregarding all material enjoyments. Anyone who practices this type of renunciation obtains the highest perfect stage of freedom from all reactions. Our problem in this world is we are bound up because of reactions due to our work. But whatever work one may do, if one does it in this way of renunciation, we had uh, uh, discussed yesterday about renunciation in the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. So, renunciation in the mode of passion and ignorance is useless. Renunciation in the mode of goodness, which is characterized by self-control, detachment and being free from all material enjoyments. So, this sort of renunciation, if one uh, practices while performing one's duties, then one can become free from all reactions. To obtain the perfection, one should follow a process given by Krishna. This process involves 17 steps. First, Krishna says, become purified by one's intelligence. Then, next step, he says, control the mind with determination. Third one, he says, give up objects of sense enjoyment. Fourth one, he says, be free from attachment and hatred. Fifth one, live in a secluded place. Sixth one, eat moderately. Seventh one, control the body, the mind and the speech. These are the three ways we actually do any activity. So all the three should be controlled. The eighth one, be always in trance. Trance means being absorbed in uh, the particular activity, specific activity we are doing. And be detached, the ninth step. The tenth step is be free from false ego. Eleventh one, be free from false strength. Twelfth one, be free from false pride. Thirteenth one, be free from lust. Then next one is be free from anger. Then give up material things. The next one is be free from false proprietorship. And the last one is become peaceful. In this way, one can be elevated to self-realization. 
What is the goal of self-realization? One who is situated in the spiritual uh, stage of realization realizes Krishna, the Supreme Brahman, the Supreme Absolute Truth and becomes fully joyful. Such a person never laments nor does such a person desire to have anything at all. Such a person is also equally disposed to everyone. In such a stage one is able to attain pure devotional service to Krishna. Now the glory of devotional service is that only by devotional service can one understand Krishna as he is, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When one is in full consciousness of Krishna by such devotion, one can enter into Krishna's personal abode in the spiritual world. Next, Krishna gives some personal instructions to Arjuna. Though engaged in all kinds of activities, Arjuna should depend upon Krishna and work always under his protection. In such devotional service, Krishna is telling Arjuna, be fully conscious of me. If one becomes conscious of Krishna, then such a person is able to cross over all obstacles of this material life by Krishna's grace. If, however, one does not work in such consciousness, but acts through false ego, not following Krishna, not listening to Krishna, then such a person will be lost in this world. Krishna is also telling Arjuna, if you don't fight and you are falsely directed because you have some sentiment, you don't want to fight, still, because of your particular nature, you will anyway be engaged in fighting. That you cannot avoid. Your nature you cannot avoid. So under illusion, Arjuna was declining to act according to Krishna's direction. But compelled to work according to his nature, he would anyway act all the same. So therefore, uh, Krishna now uh, gives his uh, next instruction to Arjuna. This is more confidential knowledge. The confidential knowledge that is already given was the knowledge about the Supreme Absolute Truth as Brahman. As I had explained earlier, the Supreme Absolute Truth is realized in three different features called Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. So Brahman realization is possible by worship of the Lord through performance of one's duties with detachment and uh, with uh, um, without any, any uh, sort of uh, material desires or material enjoyment. Now the more confidential knowledge Krishna is explaining now to Arjuna the Supreme Lord is in everyone's heart. This was already explained earlier but now Krishna is telling the Supreme Lord is in everyone's heart and he is directing the wandering of every living being who are in the body as if seated on a machine made of the material energy. We are all within the body, each one of us, every living being is inside the body, but the way we are situated in the body is we are sitting on a machine made of material energy and the wandering of this machine, the movement of this machine 
is directed by Krishna as Paramatma in the heart. Now Krishna advises Arjuna, you surrender to Paramatma because by the grace of Paramatma, you will at attain transcendental peace and also the supreme eternal abode. Now Krishna declares this knowledge as more confidential. Now he is telling Arjuna, you deliberate fully whatever I have instructed you and then you do as you wish. So Krishna is giving freedom to Arjuna to act as he wishes to act. The supreme instruction. Now Krishna gives his uh, supreme instruction and also the most confidential of all instructions. The topmost instruction. Because there are so many instructions in the Bhagavad Gita. Now Krishna is going to give his topmost instruction because Arjuna is very, very dear to him and also it is for Arjuna's benefit. Now Krishna is giving this topmost instruction. What is that? He says, think of me, become my devotee, worship me and offer your respectful homage to me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. So this is uh, Krishna's topmost instruction and the most confidential instruction. So as we have even heard earlier, the same instruction. Become my devotee. Worship me. Think of me always. This is uh, Krishna's most uh, uh, confidential and topmost instruction. Then the conclusion of the Gita is given by Krishna next. One should abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender to Krishna. Krishna promises that he will deliver such a devotee who has surrendered to him, giving up all other considerations. Such a devotee will be delivered by Krishna from all sinful reactions. One doesn't have to fear. Hmm. What about sinful reactions? No. Krishna says, don't worry. Don't fear. I will deliver you from all sinful reactions if you just surrender to me, giving up all other considerations. Next, Krishna explains, what are the results of uh, preaching the message of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna first of all says, this confidential knowledge of Bhagavad Gita should not be explained to those who are not austere, those who are not devoted, those who are not engaged in devotional service. This confidential knowledge of Bhagavad Gita should not be explained to somebody who is envious of Krishna. In earlier chapter, Krishna had told Arjuna, I am explaining the secret to you because you are not envious of me. Similarly, Krishna is telling, don't preach this confidential knowledge of Bhagavad Gita to somebody who is envious of Krishna. Then Krishna guarantees pure devotional service to those who explain the supreme secret of the Bhagavad Gita to anybody who is a devotee and Krishna guarantees that such a person who is engaged in preaching this most confidential knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, such a person will at the end, go back to Krishna. Krishna declares there is no servant in this world more dear to him than such a preacher, nor will there ever be one even in the future. So, if somebody wants to become very, very, very dear to Krishna, one has to engage in preaching this most confidential message of Bhagavad Gita. Then Krishna declares 
anyone who studies this sacred conversation between Krishna and Arjuna in the form of this Bhagavad Gita, such a person worships Krishna by his intelligence. Then further he says, one who hears this conversation between Krishna and Arjuna with faith and without envy becomes free from all sins and attains the planets where the pious people live. There are higher planets for pious people and one is able to elevate oneself to such higher planets simply by hearing this conversation with faith and without enviousness. Now Krishna asks Arjuna a question. So far Arjuna was asking Krishna questions. So now Krishna is asking one question to Arjuna. Have you heard these instructions of mine with full attention? Whether your ignorance and illusion has been dispelled? Krishna is asking Arjuna. Arjuna's answer is, yes, my illusion is completely dispelled and I have regained my memory by your mercy. Arjuna is telling Krishna. Also Arjuna says, now I am free from all doubt and I am firmly prepared to act according to your instruction. Whatever Krishna says, Arjuna is willing to do. This is actually surrender. Arjuna is now fully surrendered to Krishna. And his illusion is gone. He has revived his memory of Krishna. He is free from all doubts. He doesn't have any doubt. One simply has to follow Krishna's instruction and act according to Krishna's instructions. That's all. And the the final uh, section of this last chapter and of the Bhagavad Gita itself, Sanjaya, who was describing what's happening on the battlefield to Dhritarashtra, he is now giving a conclusion to Dhritarashtra and to all of us. Sanjaya has heard this conversation between Krishna and Arjuna directly, even though he was sitting in... Uh, Hastinapura and the battle was arranged to be fought in Kurukshetra. So even though they are far apart, Sanjaya was able to hear the conversation because of the mercy of his guru, Vyasadeva. Vyasa, the author of Mahabharata, author of so many Puranas. So by Sanjaya was a student of Vyasadeva. So by the mercy of Vyasadeva, Sanjaya was able to directly hear that conversation. And Sanjaya is telling, it is so wonderful, this conversation, what I have heard, is that my hair is standing on end. When he recalls this wonderful dialogue, he feels pleasure being thrilled at every moment. This is Sanjaya's experience of hearing the conversation between Krishna and Arjuna. Then Sanjay also says, I am able to remember and recollect again and again the wonderful form which Krishna showed Arjuna, the universal form. Krishna showed Arjuna the universal form in which he showed Arjuna the entire universe in one place. Universe is so vast, so huge. But sitting on the chariot, Arjuna was able to see the entire universe. And because Krishna gave him special vision to see that universal form. And Krishna showed the universal form to Arjuna. So by the mercy of Vyasadeva, once again, even Sanjaya was able to see uh, this particular universal form which is shown to Arjuna. So remembering that wonderful form again and again, uh, Sanjay is telling, I am struck with wonder more and more and rejoice again and again simply remembering that wonderful form. 
So the final conclusion of Sanjaya, because Dhritarashtra asked a question about the outcome of the battle. So Sanjaya is now giving what is going to be the outcome of the battle. Before the battle has begun, the battle has not yet begun. It is about to begin now. So Sanjaya is telling, wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics, Krishna is also called Yogeshwara, the master of all yogis or all mystics. And wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme archer, Dhananjaya, Dhanurdhara, I am sorry, Dhanurdhara. Uh, Arjuna is the supreme archer and Krishna is the supreme mystic. So wherever there is Krishna, wherever there is Arjuna, there will certainly be four things, he says. There will be certainly opulence, victory, extraordinary power and morality. So the most important thing is victory belongs to the Pandavas because Krishna is on their side. So this is uh, uh, Sanjaya's conclusion. This is the, the end of the entire Bhagavad Gita. So to summarize, especially this 18th chapter, which is itself a summary, the supreme instruction of morality is simply to think of Krishna always, to become a devotee of Krishna, to worship Krishna, and to offer one's respects, obeisances, namaskara to Krishna. In this way, one will be able to actually uh, reach Krishna's personal abode. Also, uh, the essence of all instructions of the Bhagavad Gita is simply to surrender to Krishna and abide by his instructions without fearing any past sinful reactions, etc. Krishna says, I will deliver you. Don't worry. You simply surrender to me. Giving up all other considerations. So, the instructions of Bhagavad Gita constitute the supreme process of religion and of morality. All other processes described in the Vedas may be purifying, may lead to this process of complete surrender to Krishna. But the last instruction of the Bhagavad Gita is actually the final uh, instruction in all morality, all religion. Simply surrender to Krishna. This is the verdict of the 18th chapter. So, in the 18th chapter, Krishna had analyzed even work itself, action itself, and he had explained what is renunciation. So, there is no difference between anybody who is engaged in their duty according to their own nature, but the duty has to be done without attachment to the results, without any consideration of personal uh, enjoyment, simply offering the results to Krishna. Even if somebody does not know Krishna as the supreme cause, if they simply sacrifice the results of their work, to the Supreme Cause, even without knowing the Supreme Cause, they will gradually be elevated to understand Krishna is the Supreme Cause. How is that? Because Krishna is seated in the heart of everyone and therefore Krishna reveals himself to such a sincere uh, person who actually um, um, does his duty and worships the Supreme Lord by the result of his work. Also, uh, 
even though different uh, types of yoga systems were explained in the Bhagavad Gita, this um, understanding that ultimately the Bhakti Yogi is the topmost Yogi and Bhakti Yoga is the topmost Yoga system and all other Yoga systems actually culminate in Bhakti Yoga because Yoga means to simply link up with Krishna as I have explained earlier each one of us we are connected with Krishna but presently we have forgotten our relationship with Krishna so to revive that relationship is the goal of our life in this world especially as human beings so all the Vedas are directing us to revive our relationship with Krishna and Bhagavad Gita summarizes the different yoga systems in four different ways one may practice yoga uh, through action that is called karma yoga or through cultivation of spiritual knowledge jnana yoga or through meditation ashtanga yoga and finally through devotion or devotional service bhakti yoga even though there are four different uh, yoga systems mentioned the topmost yoga system is bhakti yoga because through bhakti yoga one actually is able to come in direct contact with Krishna because Krishna can be known only through bhakti and no other way so if one wants to directly come in contact with Krishna one can directly take up the path of bhakti yoga practice of bhakti yoga but practice of bhakti yoga requires one have faith bhakti yoga begins with faith this faith as was explained earlier is not blind faith it is not blind faith blind faith is not going to help anybody in spiritual life so this faith is backed by spiritual understanding is backed by proper knowledge reason is backed by uh, scriptural authority it is not blind faith is never blind faith is always based on uh, scriptural knowledge authoritative knowledge proper understanding and for somebody who is not intelligent enough to be able to study the scriptures Krishna says I give the intelligence by which such a sincere devotee can actually get enlightenment and actually uh, link up with me so Krishna is seated on the heart of everyone so he knows uh, what we are doing and he is uh, very much concerned that everyone actually uh, returns to him because we all belong to him each one of us every living being without exception is Krishna's own part and parcel and we belong to Krishna so this knowledge was explained as the most uh, uh, confidential knowledge in an earlier chapter this is the transcendental knowledge so this knowledge is explained by Krishna in a simple way that you belong to me and you have forgotten me so you revive your memory about me through the practice of yoga but among all the yoga systems the bhakti yoga system is the best even the other yoga systems they aim at coming to the stage of bhakti yoga whether it is karma yoga or jnana yoga or ashtanga yoga they all uh, lead to bhakti yoga so if somebody is unable to take up bhakti yoga directly the practice of bhakti yoga directly then it is recommended or advised that they practice some other yoga system according to their inclination to do different uh, types of activities but 
ultimately one has to come to the point of bhakti and the final instruction in bhakti yoga is simply to surrender to krishna simply to surrender to krishna because for one who is surrendered to krishna in devotional service uh, such a person krishna takes charge the devotee doesn't have to do anything else it's completely uh, the devotee's life is in krishna's hands and anyway krishna is the controller of everyone and everything that's a fact even though somebody may think i am independent actually they are not independent so when somebody surrenders to krishna they come to their original position of completely depending on krishna that is our original position so that position is explained in the uh, bhagavad gita by krishna when he explains devotional service uh, tomorrow we will have question answer tomorrow and day after we will have question answer session any questions on any of the chapters of the bhagavad gita whatever your doubts you can ask hari krishna